Welcome, friends, to an alphabet of fairy and the letter Y. In this snippet of folklore, we will look at Yallery Brown, the Yanan Og, and Ichim Banok. Once in the county of Lincolnshire in England, a young man called Tom was sat resting in a field where he had been working on his daily toil. Suddenly, he heard a strange sound, a crying like that of a little child upset, moving rocks and stones around to search for the source of the crying. He found it. Lifting a flat stone a little, he uncovered a little man. He had brownish-yellow mustard-coloured skin and cried to Tom to help him get free. Now, Tom knew all about the fairy folklore tales of caution, never mess with the good folk, and all of his instincts told him to walk away, but those pitiful cries pulled at his heartstrings. He turned back and lifted the rock to free the small creature. The little man jumped up and shook himself off and he said his name was Yallery Brown and for helping him Tom would be given a wish. Now Tom wasn't the hardest of workers hence him sitting near the pile of rocks in the first place and so his wish was easy. He asked for help with the farm work that he had to do every single day. At this, Yallery Brown clapped his tiny hands and announced the wish was granted. Tom thanked the fairy man and it warned him to never thank fairy creatures or great misfortune would befall him. However, on a friendlier note, he also told Tom that if he was ever stuck and needed his help, all he had to do was shout his name and he would be there. And that was that, or so Tom thought. The next day, Tom rose ready to carry on with all the day. And as he got to where his first chores were usually ready for him, he found the work was already being done magically by itself. The broom was sweeping around the floor. The corn was being ground around and around. Pots and pans were dunking themselves in the water and coming out spotlessly clean. Days passed, and all the work was being finished wonderfully. But gossip was started to be spread that Tom must be able to cast spells. And maybe he was a witch. Hearing this, Tom grew worried because of course it was a very serious thing to be accused of witchcraft back in those days, and it could even be deadly. So Tom, in a fix, called the name of Yallery Brown. At this, the little fellow appeared. Tom had decided he wanted rid of the spell so nobody else could gossip about him. And so Tom thanked the fairy kindly and said he really didn't want magical help anymore. At these words, Yallery Brown screamed and shouted, yes, he would take away the magic, but he had already warned Tom never to thank him or his kind or bad things would happen. He told Tom the magic was gone. But from that day, and because he had ignored his warning twice, Tom would be cursed. As he's vanished, Yallery Brown spoke these words. Wax thou will, they'll never do will. Wax then out, they'll never gain out. For harm and mischance and Yallery Brown, there's let out thee sin from under the stowen. Or as we would say in more modern English, work as you will, you'll never do well. Work as you might, you'll never get anything. For harm and mischance and Yallery Brown, You've let yourself out from under the stone. 
in Brittany, that very fairy-filled place found in the north of France, and a place we love very dearly, we can find a fairy creature called Yanniganod, a Breton name meaning Little John of the Shore, or John of the Dunes. These are believed to be the souls of those lost at sea, those who have never been found. They wander the shorelines crying plaintively, Oh wee, oh wee. They aren't wicked creatures, however, one should never echo his cries, not even accidentally. If anyone should do this, the first time he will leap instantly half the way between the Joker and himself. Copy again and that distance will be halved again. Do this a third time and be warned, he will be right by you and will snap your neck. In some folklore, Yanniganod was once a king of the fairies, possibly a derivation of a Celtic god who wandered the shore alone. Where his race disappeared to and their story is lost to time. Should any human try to approach him, this one's fairy king will vanish. He does not crave company despite his loneliness. However, he has been known to shout warnings to ships who are coming too close to the shore or near hidden shallows and rocks out at sea. He has also been known to scream at and hit those who ignore his warnings. This aspect of the fellow is said to look either like a dwarf-like fairy creature or a giant, and even human size at will, a shapeshifter obviously. He will also disguise himself as an old-fashioned fisherman in oilskins, his eyes gazing out to sea, scanning the horizon, holding an oar in his hand. If seen closer in land, he chooses to appear as an old shepherd robed and with a long flowing white beard. The Ichen Banag are legendary folklore animals from Celtic Wales, who are also found in poetry and with an unearthly strength, their name deriving from Welsh's horned oxen. Two famous ones of their kind are spoken of in the legend of Cullwch and Olwen. Olwen's father set Cullwch the difficult task of finding two of the Ichen Banag and setting them to plough, no mean feat at all. The two magical oxen he named were Niniau and Pebio. There is another tale of these beasts. It tells of a time before the Welsh people lived in Britain, when they lived in what was known as the Summer Country. Among them a great man came to prominence. He was clever and inventive, and also a peacemaker among the people. It was under his rule that they decided to leave the Summer Country and sail to find a new land and they landed in what is now Wales. In this new land, they found no other people, yet it was filled with wild animals of all kinds, and one species there was the Ichambanak. They named this new place Honey Island, the first settlers of what became later Britain. Their ruler, Hugh, continued to reign wisely. Peace and plenty followed. However, over time, the peace was shattered by a monster named Afunk. It broke its way from the lake where it lived and flooded all the lands of the people. Nothing could kill this beast, despite the many attempts, and so Hugh decided to capture it instead and put it where it could do no harm. A young maiden was tasked to lure the beast from its lair and it crept to her, it laid its huge head on her lap and fell asleep. While it slept, Hugh had the beast bound and chained. And yet once it woke from its sleep, it broke all of the bindings and chains and in anger ripped open the breast of the maiden and fled back to its watery depth. However, what it did not know was that Hugh had tied the other end of the chains to his own Ichambanag, and he set them to pull, and they dragged the beast from its lake. 
and they continued pulling all the way to the mountains of Snowdonia, through the pass now known as the Pass of the Slope of the Oxen in their honour. With sheer strength from pulling this huge creature, one of the oxen lost an eye, and where it fell a pool arose known as the Pool of the Oxen Eye. This is a pool that now never dries, and is said to always be the same depth no matter the weather in the mountains of Snowdonia. The Afank was deposited in the lake of the Green Well in Snowdonia, and it is said that should a sheep fall in the waters, it will be dragged down to the depths, and even the birds there are wary of flying over this piece of water. Thank you subscribers and supporters for all your kind words, views, likes and follows. Some people have asked me how they can support the channel. Well, there are a few ways now. You can look at our merchandise shops where we have all sorts of great things with mine and Mark's art. And now you can even buy me a coffee on Ko-fi, where you can also join as a member of my page and get great principles of Mark's art and folklore things every month as a thank you from us both. I have put all of the links in the description of this episode. Only one more letter to go now and what an interesting journey it has been. I have learned so much about so many new fairies. And so until next time dear friends, do take care, brightest of blessings and remember don't play with the fairy folk or you may end up in one of my folk tales yourself.